the Invigor 211 trial, uh, did not meet its primary endpoint of overall survival benefit uh, with atezolizumab versus chemotherapy, taxane, singlazen, or vinflunin. Uh, but the caveat was that the primary endpoint for that trial was overall survival not in all comers, but the subset of patients with higher expression of PDL1, the PDL1, IC2, and 3 patients. And only if the primary endpoint was met in this subset, then they were going to look at a higher range of PDL1 expression patients and then all comers. So it was a hierarchical statistical design that you have to meet the primary endpoint in this PDL1 high expression patients before you meet all comers. And the problem, in my opinion, was that this biomarker, the PDL1 expression, based on that particular assay they used in Invigo 211 trial, which is a different assay compared to the other trials with checkpoint inhibitors. Every compound has its own assay, introducing, I would say, confusion in the field. Uh, in that particular assay with a tezolizumab study, the interesting part was that the patients who have higher PDL1 expression live longer, did better. So PDL1 expression in the Vigor 211 ended up being a positive prognostic biomarker. So people did better regardless of treatment. So it was more difficult to discern a difference between the two treatment arms if people live longer in this subset. And I think that was probably the main reason the trial read out negative as the primary endpoint. Now if you look at all comers, there was a significant difference, statistically speaking, with atezolizumab versus chemotherapy uh, in the platinum refractory advanced urothelial cancer. So if the study was designed in an all-comer approach without the hierarchical design, this could have been a positive trial, at least by statistical criteria.